Hey YouTube, here is Heiko. Uh, today we're going to take a look at my smoke generator. The smoke generator helps when you want to uh, diagnose leakages in your vacuum system or your EVAP system on your car. And it's uh, relatively easy to build one at home so you don't have to spend hundreds of dollars buying one. Let's go over the, the outside part and then we're going to take a look on the inside. Outside is a regular 30 caliber um, ammo can. Uh, this is not a military surplus. This is one of those Chinese made ones, uh, which kind of bit me in the butt later because the cheap Chinese ones, they leak. They are not waterproof. And uh, if they are not waterproof, they are also not leak proof to the stuff that you have to put in there to create smoke. So I would recommend to find an uh, an actual military surplus 30 caliber ammo can. They're a little bit nicer quality. Uh, they are put together a little nicer. But uh, regardless, uh, this one worked just fine. I think I paid 15 bucks for this thing. And then I had a old single stage propane uh, uh, regulator lying around. Uh, what I need this for, why this has to be in here, I will explain a little later. Uh, let's just keep going over the parts. Um, here's a bulkhead fitting, um, which I, oh yeah, it's a bulkhead that has, it's inside threaded and at the end I put a barb fitting on here. Uh, the barbecue propane regulator here actually had a hose on it so I had to uh, break open the crimp and take the old hose off. I'm using uh, just regular standard, what is this, half inch uh, vinyl tubing from Home Depot, holds 45 PSI, that's plenty. Um, then here on this side, I think this was quarter inch NPT threaded and I just bought, bought a fitting for a air quick disconnect because you need a air compressor to create smoke. And then here on the side, um, those are bulkhead battery terminals. They're used in automotive applications where let's say your battery is somewhere in the trunk, you run some wires and you have to bring the, the power through a bulkhead. So you put those in, um, they have the big old nut on here and then I put some sealant around it. And so you can bring electrical power through a metal wall without having any electrical issues there. And there's one in red and one in black on the other side. And then some, I want to say this is probably 14 gauge, I don't remember, 14 gauge wire. Uh, the red end has, my goodness, has a fuse in it. This is a 10 amp fuse. Uh, this is just protecting stuff from going up in smoke. Uh, when you hook this up, uh, or actually when you use it, you will hook that up to your battery in your engine compartment. And the electricity from your 12 volt battery is used to create the smoke. All right, now let's uh, take a look up here. Here's another bulkhead fitting going to a hose barb. This is all from a hardware store. So this is all stuff that you can get in the plumbing section. So bulkhead fitting, barb fitting, some tubing, um, and the tubing is then ultimately the line that you hook up to a vacuum port in your intake system to uh, check for vacuum leaks. So um, the, the tubing here goes to a vacuum port. They are usually somewhere on the side on the on the intake manifold, either on a carbureted or even fuel injected engine. And then you disconnect the vacuum line, hook this tubing onto it, and then um, this, this little device here will push smoke into your intake and uh, subsequently into your entire vacuum system. So all the vacuum lines are going to be pressurized. And um, let's now take a peek on the inside here. So on the inside, what you see on the bottom is mineral oil, or you can use uh, baby oil that is mineral oil just with a fragrance. Um, you see the other end of the bulkhead fittings. Then uh, these here are um, 
uh, wicks from a uh, tiki torch. You can buy them online on eBay. Um, these are a whole bunch of them. I think I used four. So two from each side bent 90 degrees and then two going down the other side. And then this wire here, let's, uh, I'll, I'll grab that real quick. Hold on guys. The wire is exactly this here. Uh, I bought 25 feet of, uh, is it night chrome wire, which is pretty much a, a, uh, wire that has a certain specific resistance to it. And when you run uh, electrical power through it, it will heat up. So it's like, a the wire that they use for, um, water heater, uh, heating elements or for your electrical, your coffee maker, your uh, water kettle, if you have an electric one, uh, the iron that you iron your shirts with, uh, they have, I think they use heating elements that are made out of this type of wire that pretty much heats up when you run electricity through it. And uh, I just took this wire, made a nice loop on this end, and then did a nice tight wrapping around this this wick of uh, the tiki torch thingy and then at the other end another loop that i clamped under those um, uh, bulkhead fittings and then yeah on the outside i'm supplying the electrical power 12 volt and uh, as you can see it gets hot enough that it actually gets this all black and brown and uh, the the wick sucks up this thin mineral oil it's really thin um, and turns that into smoke um, you know those party smoke machines that you can buy for uh, your your party room at home i i think they are not using this kind of stuff they are using uh, a, some sort of different principle but the mineral oil turns into smoke if heated and then here you can see the other side, the bulkhead fitting, uh, where my propane regulator is hooked up to. Uh, the purpose of this regulator is to turn my compressed air that I'm getting from my uh, compressor down to a very low pressure. So let's say we're putting 100 PSI in here, which is very uh, comparable to a, a propane bottle. A propane bottle probably has even higher pressures than that, especially in the summertime if that 20-pound bottle sits outside. So let's say we're putting 100 PSI in here, and this one-stage uh, regulator puts this down to very low pressure. I want to say, probably says that on here somewhere, if I can find it. Um doesn't say, but I want to say around 1 PSI maybe even less than that. I usually, uh, it's usually expressed in inches of water column or inches of mercury even. Uh, I don't see it on this thing here. Maybe you guys can see that. But uh, it is a very low pressure. So when you want to test your vacuum system or your EVAP system in your car, you don't want to uh, pressurize this and then maybe damage sensors or damage uh, uh, pipes or tubing somewhere that you, you know, like hidden behind something and you can't see it and it just uh, uh, bursts because you put 10 PSI in there. Uh, so the, the smoke coming out of this tubing here is very low pressure, like half a PSI. And um, that's why you need one of those. On eBay, I've seen uh, kind of self-built smoke generators that you can buy for a hundred bucks. They only have a... a a ball valve in here, which restricts the airflow. And then you have to hook up your uh, compressor at like 30 PSI already way down there. And then they control the airflow just with a ball valve. I think this is a much more elegant um, way of doing this because the, the regulator brings it down to a few inches of water column, uh, regardless of the input pressure. Um, so yeah, and all you need is a couple bulkhead fittings and some tubing and some hose clamps. And then on this side, uh, the high pressure input side, um, I just use a quick disconnect for my air line here. Um, I'll bring my air line over and show you how much pressure actually comes out of this. 
So we currently have 75. Am I seeing this correctly? No, this is 60, 70 PSI coming out of my air compressor. And now I will show you on the other end how much actually comes out of this uh, smoke, the smoke generator. So now you can hear the hissing. Um, and if I put my finger on here, you can kind of guesstimate how much air this really is. It's a good blow. It's not, it's not wimpy, it's not weak, but it will not damage any sensors or, or the interior of your fuel injection system because this is very low pressure. Now I'm going to hook up a battery and then we'll see how much smoke we can get out of this. So here guys, the smoke machine has had some time to preheat. Uh, you also got to make sure that you have a sufficient amount of mineral oil already on the wick inside. Uh, you know, it's supposed to wick it up into the heating element, but it is easier to get it started if you just use a little paintbrush or whatever, brush some on the heating element, then hook it up, wait a couple of minutes, and then hook it up to air. So, oh, here we go. You can already see how much, yeah, in in front of a dark background, how much air I'm getting out. So it's set at 75 PSI right now. Um, 75 PSI with a pressure regulator translates into 27 inches of water column. And with a preheated heating element, you can clearly see how much smoke is coming out. Right? Is that visible for you guys? Yeah, I think so. And, uh, you know, those test runs, you're not testing leaks for like hours. You, you're pressurizing the system once, letting the smoke infiltrate into the whole vacuum or evaporative system. And then uh, you're pretty much looking around and the, the moment you see some puff of smoke showing up somewhere, uh, you pretty much have already found your leak. So it's, it's really simple. And then uh, I don't know if I explained that earlier, but you can uh, wrap this chromium wire or nichrome. That's not, that's what it is. Nichrome wire tighter. So you have more heating element surface. Um, and that brings this up to a higher temperature and makes it smoke more. But uh, this is really sufficient here. So you, you, you hook it up, wait a little bit, and then get the air going. And then uh, really not bad, really not bad for a homemade device. And uh, the airflow in a situation where you actually hook this up to a vacuum port on your intake manifold, the airflow is going to be less. It's going to be restricted to escape. And so you will definitely see where the smoke comes out of out of a leaky vacuum line or leaky intake or a gasket. Um, on a old BMW, I found a broken or damaged intake manifold gasket. So this has more than paid for itself. So that's how that goes. All right, guys, now you saw it in action. You see how much smoke it puts out once you you prepare the machine here, so you just, I always have like a pack of a hundred of those little acid brushes lying around. Whoop. And then you just dip it in there and brush some on. And that cools down the heating element. And then close this puppy up. Wait a moment. And we get beautiful smoke. All right, guys, if you like this little video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, and uh, I will produce more content for you. Thank you, guys. Take care.